What's up, guys? So, yeah, we're going to talk a little bit about the tattoos. I've had a lot of you guys ask me about it. So, the very first tattoo I ever got was this, um, was based on a character called She by a guy named, uh, uh, was it William Tucci? And it was a comic series that was pretty cool. And I really thought that the main character was just hotness. And there was a cover of one of the comics that I really liked. And so I made some modifications to it, took it to a tattoo artist, and walked around um, looking for a bunch of different parlors, and finally ended up with uh, Da Wei tattoos, and went in, and the lady was, uh, Lady Dragon, was the uh, gal who was available to do the tattoo. And uh, she made a couple of modifications to the tattoo, uh, took off the main she character, that was on there and told me that that was uh, the symbol of death and that it's not good to have that uh, symbol put on my arm. So I said, okay, that's fine. You know, it was the very first tattoo I ever got. And I remember sitting down and she got started and fuck, it hurt. Uh, it hurt, hurt pretty bad. I didn't really know what I was expecting. And I had a buddy of mine told me, dude, you get a tattoo, you're going to get a bunch more. And I'm like, yeah, right. And so I got that one and, um, I told everybody that that was going to be, you know, whenever a girl would see that tattoo, they say, who is that? That's, that's my dream girl, you know? And um, I added in a couple of a couple of components to it, like I added in the yin and yang. And um, shit, the very next week, or actually two weeks later, uh, after it was done, I had to go back like three times, I think. Um, because it was color. And so as I went back and had to keep putting color and color and color in, uh, heel, heel, heel. And, uh, it was funny cause I remember when she did the face, I was like, Oh my God, right, right when the tattoo was done, it looked like a woman had had her ass just completely beat. It was just so brutalized. And, uh, she said, no, no, when it heals, it, it'll look fine. It'll look fine. Trust me, trust me, trust me. And I was like, man, fuck, I hope so. Cause this looks like dog shit right now. And sure enough, as it healed and a lot of the ink fell out, all of the subtle shading and gradation that was in there just looked fucking awesome. So I was really happy with that tattoo. And two weeks after that tattoo was done, I went and started on the other arm. So the very next tattoo I got was a combination of two very famous Japanese paintings. One was, was the uh, Great Wave, uh, Great Wave off Kanagawa. Uh, and that's the one that you see in most of the restaurants is a big wave. I had that as the background. And then I put um, the girl, which is from a painting called A Beauty. And in the fan, uh, inside of her fan, I put uh, some I Ching in there. And um, some of the ink, some of the blue got pushed out from the uh, tattoo my body rejected the blue and it was at that point I decided I would never do any more colored tattoos they would they would all be black and white because uh, for whatever reason some of the color just wouldn't stay so that one on that arm there is kind of just a um, combination of two really cool Japanese paintings that I liked and it went with a water motif and so eventually the the thinking was that that arm was going to be uh, a bunch of water elements and what's interesting is on that particular arm <clears throat> I have uh, koi fish which you'll see later and that koi fish uh, was for my daughter so it falls on the water arm so anyway yeah that's what that particular tattoo is right there the next tattoo I got after that was kind of um, uh, it was a a logo idea that I came up with um, and it also symbolizes um, a friendship I have with a, a good friend of mine, Colin. And it was basically a two-headed dragon and it was to symbolize the fact that I'm half Asian and half Caucasian. Um, half white, half Asian. Japanese to be specific. And I decided what would be really cool is if I took an Asian dragon's head and a European dragon and combined them. And it was also symbolic of the friendship that I had with my, my friend Colin, who has the exact same tattoo on his back. Um, because he's European, 
and you know I identified more with the Asian so it was also kind of a symbol of our our brotherhood our friendship and there's been a, a few other people that we're going to get that same tattoo and put it on them as well um, but that's the way that's just you know that's another story so it uh, it's a cool piece I really like it uh, and it's a, it's kind of like I was using it as my logo for my company for quite some time um, so yeah it's two-headed dragon European and Asian now the big the big ass dragon on my chest now that's that's an interesting one um, I was down in Santa Cruz and I came across the tattoo parlor and I wanted a tattoo on my chest of a dragon and I asked the guy if he could do a dragon he said yeah I could do a dragon I said I want to do an Asian dragon I want to be kind of ancient and kind of you know really imposing and intimidating and uh, you know I wanted I wanted to go back over my shoulder and he said yeah no problem <clears throat> and the guy was fucking amazing he put just a couple of lines on my chest where he was going to have all of the pieces like he put a mark where the eyes were going to be marked where the jaw was the neck things like that and then he proceeded to basically freehand out most of the pieces which was fucking amazing the guy was outstanding and that piece took forever and it got to the point where we got to the eyes and I said no I don't want I don't want any eyeballs in there and he said well what, why don't you want to have any eyeballs in here I said you know I don't want any eyeballs so that way no matter what when somebody's looking at it it's looking at them you know if you put an eyeball in you know it's not necessarily looking at you and I wanted it to have just those empty eyes uh, because at that time I, I was single and I was messing around with a lot of different girls and I told myself I needed a kind of a, a guardian of my heart and so that's why he was sitting on my right side looking to my left and so whenever I was getting ready to get down with a girl or whatever and I pulled my shirt off <clears throat> if they freaked out and said oh my god that's so scary then I'd put my shirt back on I'd take the girl back home and that would be that I mean that's how hardcore I was with it you know it was my guardian so when he was doing a tattoo we took one break and it was a almost a nine hour session and he was going and going and going and he was a perfectionist I tell you the shading he just kept going he kept doing stuff kept adding pieces to it and there was actually supposed to be a chest panel that went along with it um, to cover the whole entire chest and I was so hamburger and so thrashed after I said no nah, dude I'm, I'm cool I don't I don't uh, I don't need anything else and um, sure enough the Guardian worked out well because when I met my wife and I took my shirt off the first thing she said was wow that is so cool to which I was very happy because the Guardian did its job so that dragon piece is um, one of one of my highlights and I think it cost almost eight hundred dollars uh, I think that was the cost on that, uh, which is not too bad considering, uh, like I said, I was there for like nine hours and the guy just, just did an amazing job with it. The next tattoo is one that me and my wife both have on the back of our necks. Um, and it's supposed to be a Japanese character for eternity. And I don't know, there was a few events that happened since then where I had this job interview and had a Japanese girl there and she looked at it really nastily like a fucking complete bitch and she was like oh what is that supposed to mean and I'm like eternity and she's like that's not what it means and she just walked away and I'm so now I'm kind of like well shit I don't necessarily know what it means but uh, when we looked in the book to get it it said eternity so if any of you guys recognize this particular character and uh want to sh share shed some light on it that'd be appreciated but as far as me and my wife is concerned it does mean eternity for us because we got it uh, when we got married and it was just something that you know we got that matched and I thought it was fucking cool all right so the very next tattoo I got <clears throat> my daughter Angel was born and she was born year of the dragon uh, she's a metal dragon and it was a um, pretty cool thing she was born year 2000 so I wanted to get a tattoo um, that reflected her so I had got the uh, dragon and I put it behind the very first tattoo I got of the she character and it came down and it wraps wraps around my arm and uh, it was a tattoo parlor in downtown San Francisco my brother took me and I, I told my wife yeah I'm gonna get a, I'm gonna get a small tattoo of a dragon and uh, I came back and she was like what the fuck is that that thing is fucking huge and uh, it wrapped around my arm and it was just 
you know, a really cool tattoo. The guy was really, really fucking cool. I mean, he w- he was really excited about it. We stayed there till after the parlor was closed. He stayed till it was done because, you know, I lived in Southern California at the time, so I was just down in Northern California visiting. And I told him, yeah, I'm leaving to go back home the next day. And he's like, well, all right, well, fuck it. So he did it. He dropped he dropped everything and just did the tattoo on the strength of a relationship with my brother and uh, did an amazing job with it. It's uh, another one of the cool tattoos that I got. So it, that's for my daughter, uh, Angelica. So the tattoo after that, you know, my daughter, Miley, was born. Man, she was born Year of the Horse. And I wasn't too key on getting a horse tattooed on myself. And so I struggled for a while trying to figure out something that was reflective of her uh, that would work. Um, And as a child, she kept getting stuck on stupid whenever there was a fish tank around. So she would go and she'd see a fish. We'd go to a restaurant and she just would not move. She would just watch the fish like crazy. She was totally captivated by them. And I thought, you know, it was funny because as a baby, she used to make this face. She used to make this little ooh face. And it, and so I, I kind of decided, you know, I'm going to koi fish because uh, it's good luck. And my daughter has always brought me good luck. And so I figured, you know what, I'm going to get a koi fish, but I'm going to design it myself. So I designed it. And uh, I I took some elements and I made the fish kind of enough to remind me of her, some of her expressions. And so that koi fish um, is for to commemorate the birth of my daughter, Miley. And uh, that one came out really cool as well. I don't remember. I think I got it at Ironclad Tattoo uh, here in Utah. I think that's where I got it. I'm not 100% sure, though. So actually, the next two tattoos, they were, when I was doing the Street Warrior stuff, I had did a character, uh, a rendering of me, and it had those two tattoos uh, on the arm. One was Nicade Malice, which means don't give in to misfortune, which I took as, you know, don't sweat the small stuff. And then the other one was Advin Kerat Mori, which was victory or death, and I took that as you know, you give it 110% and never give up. And I, I was talking about that with a reporter, letting him know that I actually had those tattoos, and I hadn't had them yet. I had planned on getting them, but I just hadn't done it. And so here we were getting ready to go to a trade show where there was going to be some press that were going to interview me. And so I said, oh, sh- oh shit, I, gotta, I better get these tattoos. So I went down to Ironclad, and I told him, hey, this is what I want on my arms. And he looked at it initially, and he said, dude, those letters are way too thin. You know, they're very, very sharp letters. I don't, I'm not sure I can do it. And I said, man, I got faith in you. You could do it. And so he sat there, and sure as shit, he did it. And they came out really, really good. And so the color motifs are already established by... You know, the fire side of the arm and the water side of the arm were there as well. So Otvin Kerat Mori sitting on a fire side. So there's a little uh, fire, you know, little fire jeweled four, four pointed piece that's down there. And then on the water side, they got the blue. So that carried that, that color motif all the way through. And so those were the, the next sets of tattoos that I got. So then there were quite a few years passed um, before I got the next sets of tattoos I got contacted by um, a buddy of mine who was had some tattoo cream uh, for numbing king and I was I decided okay I'll I'll do a test so I get a tattoo on one hand and and then I do the other hand with uh, some numbing cream so the very first one that I got was the zero on my left hand and that one uh, is very specific. That had a very specific meaning. It was like uh, never give up, no complaints, um, no excuses. But the most specific one was zero. Zero fucks given. So it was basically my testament to the world uh, as being rebellious because it was on my hand that I just didn't give a fuck anymore. Um, I had pretty much got all the tattoos you've seen thus far in areas that I could cover with a long sleeve shirt or something of that nature, uh, the conscious decision to get a tattoo on my hand was a rebellious statement that I will never go back to a nine to five job. Uh, it was it was a way for me to tell the world, you know, I don't give a fuck. I'm just I'm doing my own shit, and that's how it is. Then the other hand, um, I thought long and hard on what that was going to be, and what I wanted was Alpha and Omega. I wanted it to be. God guides my hand 
and I sat, put the numbing cream on it, and had the artist uh, do it, and I wanted them to match kind of the same motif, so the zero fucks given side was done uh, kind of a stone, granite, aged, weathered, you know, uh, throughout time type of thing, and then the other one, I wanted to do the same thing, but I wanted it to be Alpha and Omega, and I hadn't thought about the direction it was going to face, so I got it, and you know, he did a good job with it. Uh, not as good as the other guy, but it was still pretty good. Um, and I remember I was in the shower looking down and I looked at it from my point of view and it didn't look like an A and an O. It looked like a U and a V. And I was like, son of a bitch, you know, because I got it as a way for me to remind myself that God guides my hand in all things that I do. And it was funny because I sat there in the shower going, son of a bitch, it looks like a U and a V. And then it hit me, ultimate victory. And I was like, oh, I get it. That's awesome. So God, you know, God did guide my hand. So that placement worked out perfect because it's Alpha and Omega, but it's also ultimate victory with the zero fucks given. So as long as I keep going and I don't give up, no problem. Ultimate victory will be mine. So those were uh, the two tattoos on my hand. So the final tattoo that I got was the tiger on my chest. And that was for my son. And my son, I wanted something special. I wanted something that matched the motif that was going on, that was being established by, you know, the iconography that I was already kind of adorning my body with. And I wanted something, though, that was really, really unique, something that was kind of special. And so I hunted around, hunted around, found some images, found some some kind of hybrids, and I... uh I wanted my son to really like it as well, and I got it on my left chest over my heart because my son is my heart. You know, he's he's uh, he's my son. You know, and so I got this the the tiger because you know the heart of a tiger. So it had dual meaning there, and also I wanted it to give me the strength and determination and willpower. Uh, to complement the dragon, and a lot oftentimes you'll see a motif of a, a tiger and a dragon, um, you know, going at it, um, and that was important for me to have something that I would be proud of. And again, I went with the uh, motif of no eyeballs. I wanted I wanted the the dragon and the tiger to have elements that match them, and so you know, having having no eyes that was vital. And we went with kind of a watercolor feel to it, and the artist was thrilled. He was like, dude, yeah, I'm interested in doing this. Let's rock this out. And uh, again, that was part of uh, the Numbing King. I used the Numbing Cream on it, and we went with that, and there it goes. And so that was the last tattoo that I got. And um, so all of my kids now have a tattoo that represents them. And I think the very next tattoo I get will most likely be uh, the Angry Jack logo. Um, I've been thinking about placing it uh, right in the center of my chest up by my neck. Um, my wife was kind of, you know, initially I was going to put it on my throat or on the side of my neck. And uh, she was kind of against that. And so I think if I put it down there, it will be okay. And it will still peek out and it's still, you know, it'll still be kind of cool. Um, because Angry Jackalope is really kind of morphing into a major component of my life. And so I'd like to have that kind of commemorated some part of my body. And then, of course, at some point, I will do a full back piece. Um, I haven't gotten down to my legs, but I know at some point there will be some tattoos on my legs. So that's it. That's, that's the story of all my tattoos that I've got thus far. Okay, guys. Hope you like it.